Hi, good evening, everyone. This is Swatnesh Sebastian, uh, and I will be taking you through this demo session of organizational culture. I think I'm audible to most of us here. And uh, uh, just a self-introduction from my end. I started my career uh, after my engineering with this company called as Nokia Priority Service and uh, moved into areas of sales and management. And somewhere down the line, I realized that uh, I have a passion for management, so I chose to pursue my engineering, sorry, my uh, master's in business administration in the University of Wales, UK. And after completing my MBA there, I had the opportunity to work for a management consulting company called CTP International, where my role was to support the, the CEO as well as the management team in consulting projects. I got a great experience here working with uh, the team learning different aspects of business, uh, mostly into strategy and HR. And uh, I have got the opportunity also to travel to Dubai as well as uh, Nigeria and interact with some uh, clients there as well. Then start off as a trainer, started off as uh, a research associate and somewhere down the line got the opportunity to, to teach as well as to train professionals. Right now, uh, I am training professionals, computer uh, professionals in the area of soft skills in the IT industry as well as manufacturing as well as some of the other publishing industries. I'm also teaching in business schools. And one of the things I really love about uh, being uh, a faculty is to be able to share my experiences and also be able to gain the experiences of the, of the people here. Now, that's about me and uh, I hope most of you uh, would know that if you have any question during the session, you can always type your question in the chat window, the question window, and uh, I will try to answer them if possible at the moment of time, or I will have to uh, you know, pause at a certain place, preferably after a topic, and answer the question. So uh, I hope uh, that's a good introduction, and I'd like to get on with the session since we have limited time. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming for this session and uh, thank you all for being a part of this session and uh, uh, we'd like to make it a great session not only for today but also for the entire uh, organizational behavior module. Okay, let's start off with this topic. Right. So once again, I'd like to share the information regarding the questions. If you'd like to uh, ask any questions, please pop it up on the chat on the question chat window and I will be notified of that and I will try to uh, you know answer the questions if not I will try to answer it at the end of a slide or probably the topic and then if you still have questions at the end of the session we can always take them uh, you know at the end of the session right and you will also have this recording in your uh, archive in your uh, Edureka account where you can go online and uh, check for the videos that are available. Also, the PPTs will be made available there for you. So you will be given uh, you know, access to that as well. <clears throat> anyway, let's get started with the topic, right? So today what we have here is organizational culture. Now, organizational behavior as such is something that is uh, a very interesting part of life because it is not just about an organization, but it's also about life. And I'd like to start with one famous uh, quote given by one of the uh, scholars from IAM. Uh, and the quote was this. He said, if he had known before the start of the MBA that business is more about psychology than it is about economics, he would have probably done a degree in, econom uh, in, in psychology rather than economics, which would have helped him become a better businessman. Now, I, uh, I don't completely agree with him, but I do believe that it is an excellent statement because most businesses are run by human beings and involves human beings as well. So I think it's uh, 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 very important for us to understand that part of business. To really understand what organizational behavior is, it's important for us to understand human behavior and how humans uh, interact in an environment and how they behave as individuals and how they uh, behave as a part of uh, you know an organization 
and so on. So as far as I, uh, as far as organizational culture is concerned, we first have to understand the individual from the individual perspective. So a human being is an individual who has inherent characteristics and uh, has individual abilities and so on. He also is a part of a family which makes him a member of a family, for example, a husband or a father or a son or a wife or a daughter and so on. So he's also a part of a family. And third, he is a part of a greater uh, you know, group, which is typically the society. But if you look at society, I would say the society that uh, most people between the age of 25 and 40 uh, or 25 and 50 uh, that would be the surrounding would be their workplace. And for us to understand this would be a crucial part. Uh, so we are going to look at how this is going to be uh, applicable to man's life and how the culture is going to be important. Before I go into organization culture, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, culture as such in general. And uh, it's important for us to know and we being from different parts of this country, uh, being a part of this tech, uh, you know, webinar where technology has brought us together, I am here to talk about how culture affects every part of a human being. I mean, our upbringing is basically uh, affected by the type of culture that we have brought in locally within the family as well as the greater society, which is school and college that has an impact on us. And so does the organizational culture have an impact on a human being. Uh, I was just traveling last week and when I moved from one state to another, I could see the distinct difference between uh, what we had in one state and the, what we have in the other state. For example, we had areas uh, uh, of differences like the language, the way of interaction, and also the way houses were built, the way in which uh, people uh, you know, interacted with uh, you know, uh, others within the community, the kind of uh, you know, approach people had towards interacting and so on. So just crossing the border from one state to another, we could see we, we can see a lot of difference. And so that's what you see when uh, a person joins an organization or moves from one organization to another. It's not something that's visible as such, but it is felt. And that is what organizational culture is about. Now, if you were moving from one school to another, that's typically where uh, we can you can have. Uh, you know, a kind of uh, difference as such. Now, I have a question here from uh, M. Kartike, and let me answer this question before we uh, go into explaining culture a little bit more. Now, the question asked by Mr. M. Kartike is, any measurement scales for organization culture? Uh, it's very difficult to say, uh, to give you a very uh, definitive answer here, simply because organization culture is more of a soft factor. Uh, it's not something which can be measured directly, but certain things within the culture can be measured. For example, uh, if you have a culture of innovation and if you have a culture of leadership, if you have a culture of entrepreneurship, you could kind of relate uh, the measurement of these factors to the particular uh, you know, uh, organization culture. I, I don't think there are any specific parameters as of now to uh, quantify a culture, but there are certain things of you know, like development, like you have a normal culture. For example, uh, if you're trying to evaluate one culture to another, or you're going to compare two cultures, uh, in the society, you would look at things like, uh, you know, uh, the health index and uh, some of the other factors which uh, indicate how well a society is moving forward. But there isn't uh, something which can directly give you uh, a culture. Now, there is also another question from... Uh, yeah, Enosh Thomas, the, the, the question is about what should be done when culture is imposed, okay? Uh, culture is something which is an underlying factor in an organization which cannot be done away with. Now, if you're talking about somebody moving into, uh, uh, you know, an area where uh, there's a new culture, to some extent, culture will be imposed. I think that's a very uh, important factor because culture's definition itself is about the way we do things out here. So when you move to a new organization or when you are uh, a new joining in an organization, 
culture will be uh, imposed to a certain extent because uh, culture is about a shared, uh, creating a shared value, a shared purpose. So in order to accomplish a shared purpose, it is important for us to really be able to, uh, you know, kind of take things forward together. So there will be culture uh, imposed on them, right? Uh, so that that's so. There, I have a question from Shruti Thakur who asks me. Uh, it's qualitative, don't you think? Yes, culture is qualitative. It is not quantitative. It is very much related to human behavior and human interactions. So I think it's about quality. It's about how you feel, and 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 the, the culture can make you feel in a certain a certain way it can make you feel happy satisfied it can also make you feel uh, upset regret you might find it regressive as well so i think uh, it, it is a qualitative I, I definitely think it is something that is qualitative and you cannot quantify it sometimes based on uh, just numbers and facts uh, and so on i have another question which i will take before i go into the next uh, part of this presentation which does culture culture improve productivity uh, I have a question from Vinod Chidambaram, and the question is, does culture improve productivity? I have to say uh, that depends on the type of culture and the type of environment the business is thriving in as well. Uh, I'm sure culture will contribute, and we have a slide in the future which, in, 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 the, in the presentation which talks about the connection between culture and productivity. I think that slide should answer your question, Vinod. So I, I, I think I will move on to that part of the thing which will help me uh, explain that better. Right. So uh, as such, you can, there is no definitive answer of whether culture improves productivity. We need to create a culture which promotes productivity, which promotes motivation. And there are several other factors. It's not just about uh, the numbers that you portray uh, in the long run, uh, because culture is something that will exist with the organization for a long in, a, in the long run. And hence, uh, it will create productivity, performance, motivation and so on in the long run. Uh, so let me start. Uh, moving into the next slide. So what are we looking at? What is our agenda for today? We are looking at understanding what is organization culture. We are looking at the dimensions of organization culture. Uh, we have the types of organization culture. We have the functions of organization culture. How important organization culture is to employees. Uh, sustaining and perpetuating organization cultures. I think all these are related to some of the questions that have come up, the queries that have come up. And I, I hope to answer most of the queries through the presentation as well as uh, taking the questions. And uh, the last part is changing the organization culture. So uh, it's all interrelated. It's it's just a detailed version of organization culture and different aspects. And let's look at each one of them, uh, you know, uh, one by one. So I hope the agenda is is, is fine. Uh, I have a question from Enosh Thomas uh, again, which talks about how uh, the behavior culture disturbs the productivity and how to overcome it. Uh, Enosh, thank you for the question once again. Uh, it's a very interesting question, and uh, I, I feel that it's it's a it's a difficult question to answer, and most organizations are trying to work towards this. Uh, it is it is something that could affect the productivity. Sometimes it's not about getting the best out of people; it's about what is being agreed upon, and hence productivity could be affected because a culture may be promoting a system where uh, everybody is is in the loop, rather than making it uh, a place where each person's productivity is maximum. Now, how do you overcome it? I'm afraid I can't answer that question in one sentence or in one phrase because uh, it depends on the culture. It also depends upon how individuals are able to match their uh, you know, uh, nature to the nature of the culture in that organization. And I think that's what Enos Thomas has said. He said it's more about the nature of a person. Yes, it is something to do with the nature of the person and how well the nature of the person is able to uh, interact and function effectively within uh, an organization. Right, so I'll try to answer that question as we go. Uh, let's first look at, let's first look at uh, uh, this picture that you have on your screen. The culture is something I said, 
which is the underlying factor. And when you travel from one place to another, you see a difference in the way things are being done. Uh, that could affect the way people uh, treat each other within an institution. It could be the way things are carried out so that you can make an input and output. That's what you have in process. And it also talks about people because culture is really about people. And if you talk about an organization, uh, culture affects these three things, structure, people, and process. And that's where I think culture has an impact on people. Because somebody said uh, it's about the nature of the person. Enosh said it's about the nature of the person. So culture definitely affects the, you know, the characteristics of the people and so on. It affects the way things are done. Uh, it, it affects the way uh, the, the organization processes its, its input to convert it into an output which will be useful for the company to sell. Uh, therefore, the process will definitely be affected here. And we have structure as well, uh, the organization structure, depending on the kind of culture. If it's a very, uh, you know, a, a strict, rigid culture, for example, the army, then the structure would obviously be affected in that sense. So the culture in the army is that you have a, uh, you have a hierarchical structure and you have, you need a culture where people obey orders and follow orders without too much of, uh, you know, opposition. So in that sense, the structure has really been affected by the culture. So all these factors really have culture as an important uh, aspect. And we're just trying to explore it a little bit more. And that's why the personal aspect is also very important. So we have three aspects here. There is a culture, the people and the process being related uh, to the organization culture. So let me just move on to the next slide. Uh, what is organization culture? Like I said, uh, it's about how people feel when they move to a new organization, a new environment. And that's when you really feel the culture of organization. One of the things that is important to understand is man is a social being. And that's why it's important for us to understand that we like to live, or most of us really like to live as a part of a group, a smaller or bigger group. Uh, very purpose of education, schooling, is for us to really go and interact with people. It's not just about scoring marks and getting educated. It's really about interacting with people. And, and when you interact with people, after a while, there is a there is a shared way of doing things. There are, there are acceptable way of doing things. There are acceptable ways of not doing things. And there are certain things. For example, when a gentleman who studied with me in school moved from, uh, from the Middle East uh, to join a school in India, uh, there was a huge difference in the way things were being done here and things were being done there. Yes, there were some physical limitations. For example, the gentleman was asked, uh, was, was finding it difficult to handle the hygiene. He was also finding it uh, difficult to, uh, you know, kind of uh, deal with the kind of, uh, you know, the classroom uh, etiquette and so on. He was also finding it difficult to deal with the way the teachers dealt with the students and the students interacted with the teachers. So there was a great difference and it took about six months for him to understand. And that's where I think this question of uh, should culture be imposed? I mean, I cannot say the culture is imposed. Can we change a whole culture for the sake of one person? That would be difficult, but it could be made in such a way that, uh, you know, the uh, accommodation of the person could be good. Like, for example, when I joined one of the companies in India, a training company, we, uh, we have a, we had a culture there where the f the first day we had uh, you know the new employee introduce himself and there was a treat given to every employee within that team yes it was a smaller team so we had we had this person uh, made uh, you know visible to the other members of the team moreover uh, the team member was asked to stand in front of the group and also uh, do the things that the you know the the others would ask him to do just or ask her to do. This was to make the person comfortable with the group. So uh, this was a part of the culture there. So it, it was a norm. So really it is about what goes here. Sim in simple words, I would say the way we do out, uh, things out here. And so it, 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 it is usually developed over a period of time. The leader also has an important role uh, in, in determining it uh, and, and so on. Uh, that's what organizational culture is about. And some of the top companies that exist, and if you look at the survey about the top 100 companies uh, to work for, uh, uh, you know, the most important thing is the organization culture, the culture that you have and that promotes people's talents, that makes people feel at home and makes people feel comfortable. That's what we need in an, in an organization. Uh, I, I would 
uh, I'm quickly moving on to the next slide. If you have any questions, uh, please do uh, you know pop them up. I would I would be more than happy to to take your questions there. Right. So the, the next topic I have, the next slide I have here is about uh, what does it do? What what does it really make us feel? I mean, if you're a part of a culture, what is it that makes you feel a oneness? Uh, in, in, in terms of purpose, it also creates uh, certain cultural products as in how we do things. It also describes or prescribes behavior in, in, in certain, in certain uh, uh, ways of how we behave and how we're supposed to react to a certain thing. Now culturally, uh, socially, we may react to certain incidents in a certain way and Indians in general are known to be quite sentimental people and that's something to do with our culture. Now within an organization as well, there would be a certain way of dealing with things. Uh, uh, you know, there could be things that, uh, you know, cause sudden reactions. There could be things that, uh, you know, are dealt with in a, in a certain way due to the way culture is dealt with. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things that uh, is important to notice is how organizations deal with things like uh, you know, uh, downsizing, or how do they, uh, you know, sack employees? You know, there are certain, for example, telco for a long time, or Tata companies for a long time have known to have a culture where they retain employees. There's another publishing company which has, which I work with, which has a culture where they tend to keep employees for a longer time. Uh, and it's it's really about uh, the culture that has been perpetuated within that organization for a long time. So they do not raise their salaries. They do not fire employees. Rather, they keep them together so that uh, even if they are low paid, they still keep or manage to keep the people together. Now, uh, so I have I have a statement made by uh, Enos Thomas. Thank you again uh, for a couple of statements. I would say nature of a person. I believe that culture should be unity and diversity. Uh, Enosh, I, I appreciate that a culture should be unity and diversity. It should be something that is uh, creating, uh, you know, unity within the organization, and it should be something that most of the people in the organization should be able to accept. Yes, Enosh, I think that's correct. Uh, monopoly, yes. Again, that depends on the type of organization. Uh, we would require some amount of monopoly in the defense. Uh, we could not let. Uh, we probably cannot love the kind of freedom that we have in some of the organizations in organizations like the defense so i think it's uh, it's very important but what happens is like you said uh, sometimes some people may not be suitable in certain cultures and that's why they leave the organization so when people talk about leaving organizations or quitting organizations there are two main reasons yes the salary is one part of it i would i would not take salary as the most important thing i would say that two the two main reasons why people leave, leave organizations uh, would be uh, one they 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 quit the manager not the manage not the company they quit the manager because they're working under the manager and so they find it difficult and the other would be the culture which exists within the organization uh yes Vinod kumar i have a question from you which says how could we develop a suitable culture now that's a that's a very good question i think i'll be answering the question uh, uh, not in a very idealistic way but i can show you what plays a role in developing a culture and perpetuating a culture and uh, probably, uh, if you still think that we need to answer the question later, I will, I will, I will definitely uh, answer that question. Yeah. Thank you, Vinod, for that question. So uh, we have looked at this. Uh, let's quickly move on to the next slide. What does uh, what does organizational culture really do for us in a sense that what are the dimensions? I mean. What are the you know length and breadth and width of this kind of uh, effect of culture? Where does culture really have an impact? I mean, uh, it could really have an impact in basic things like the way we communicate uh, and the way we celebrate a particular event. You could talk about how uh, organization, how organi individuals in an organization have to behave or not to behave uh, in, in in certain areas. And uh, what are the the prominent factors which drive an organization. For example, certain organizations stand for things like quality, some stand for customer satisfaction, some stand for uh, uh, some stand for maybe uh, high employee motivation. Some cultures even focus on how to go about, uh, you know, uh, you know, creating an environment which will be suitable for the customer, or creating an environment or a culture which is 
tailor made towards the, the the economy and the market conditions so uh, it, it really sets the tone for the way people function in an organization that's why culture is important it's not it's not written so much about in organization walls or charts but it's really felt when you are within the organization that's when you see limiting factors and also supporting factors uh, and and uh, that could also play an important role in creating what 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 would i mean uh, what i mean by a suitable culture as well the other thing that culture does for you is also helps you uh, decide on matters for example it helps you design policies it also helps you decide on issues when you come to a decision making point i mean if the culture is is about a group then uh, i mean you get together as a group and and take a decision if it's about an individual uh, a monopoly then uh, you know you could be a quick decision maker within a quick decision making environment which is the culture there so you might quickly make decisions for example in general uh, it is known to be uh, it, again this is not uh, a, a standard or a stereotype it is just based on my experience that uh, when interacting with americans uh, i have noticed that they tend to be quick decision makers so they have a culture of quick decision making and initiatives whereas while interacting with some of uh, the other environments i feel they're more group oriented which means that they would go back and discuss with their so the culture is for them to get together and agree and reach a consensus uh, whereas sometimes it's about moving quickly uh, in certain environments so the culture defines that and you will see that when you move from one organization to another even though it is the same role even though it's the same position you might be moving to be a assistant sales manager in a region even though the the company and the industry and the type of uh, product remain uh, you know remain the same your way of functioning in an environment may be slightly different and that's that's, that's basically because of the underlying culture which 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 exists there now uh, i have a question from enosh and the question is are there certain guidelines to design a culture for an organization uh, and uh, how does organizational strategy impact its culture now there is a there is there's a strong relationship between strategy and culture uh, or culture and strategy now uh, savan thank you for the question i mean it's 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 a, it's a very interesting question it's a it's a question which again uh, needs a lot more of exploration uh, and uh, uh, there are guidelines to design a certain you know again what type of culture do you want you know i mean uh, are you talking about what you want or are you talking about what uh, you know your company employees want so it's a very difficult question to answer uh, it's a very subjective question because you might want a culture in the organization to be a certain way but maybe the majority of them may want it in a certain other way so uh, if you are having an issue or if i as an individual i'm having an issue with the culture uh, the question of whether the culture has to change according to me or i have to adapt to the culture is a is a very important question to answer and uh, when you are talking about decision making organization culture also comes in mr uh, you know seven uh, co organization culture also plays an important role in in determining the strategy and decision making is is also there so let's 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 try and explore that question a little bit more as we as we move on to the next slides uh, uh, i think i think i think we are coming here and this particular slide my head may help us answer some of those questions about talking about strong organization cultures now how do i know a culture is strong or weak uh, you only know that when you are trying to change things now like you said if there are certain guidelines that you want to take to change a culture the first thing you'll have to do is understand that a culture is not something that can be changed quickly and it takes years and years of uh, you know working together and and uh, uh, implementing certain ideas and bringing forth and highlighting certain things and that's why the role of the founder is very important in designing the culture i mean the kind of culture that you set initially seems to be something that rolls on and it evolves and it reaches a mature stage uh, and and after that most people who come and tend to try and fall into the culture they find it difficult to change the culture so let's look at uh, let's look at let's really look at uh, the strong cultures and when it's strong people know what has to be done and people understand what is expected of them and they know how to work in a group 
and the most important thing is about employees identifying the culture if you work for a company and uh, or if you are working for a company and you see yourself as a, a person strongly linked to that company and if you associate uh, an important part of your life to that company it means that there's a strong culture in the organization let me give an example there's a friend of mine who, who was having a difficult period of time in one of the IT companies he started his career in that company and uh, he found himself uh, in difficult positions and compromised positions where there were others who were doing well and given recognition he wasn't being given recognition but when you spoke ill about the company you will see this gentleman uh, you know getting angry and uh, defending his company with all that he has and, 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 and when I asked him the question isn't the same company that's giving you a difficult time he would say uh, yes the 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 general atmosphere in my team is not very good, but the organizational culture is very supportive. Mm -hmm. it, it would make uh, it would make us very very uh, you know uh, you know grow in a certain way. It will help us. It, it's a very supportive environment in general. It is invested in me, and especially uh, the company is very good when a new joinee is joining the company. So it makes me feel welcome. It makes me feel empowered. It gives me the resources. And the culture here is for creating long-term talent. And so short-term talent or short-term gains are not very important. Uh, and uh, Enosh, uh, you have come up with a statement saying, I would like to design culture that is helpful for majority. Right. Uh, Enosh, that's, that's something that is what is being accepted by most. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to create a new organization and you want to create a culture there which is suitable to majority. Or are you trying to uh, create uh, or change an existing culture? Now, that's a very important question to know. And that question really has some of its answers in the slide that we have here, where an elements of weak culture, where uh, there is no sense of culture, which has become the culture of a period of time. People don't associate themselves with this kind of a company. Uh, and uh, culture upwards or downwards, uh, in most cases, Enosh, the culture flows from the you know, founder and from the management bottomward. But what happens over a period of time is uh, the, at the top level, you don't get to see things on a day-to-day -day basis and you don't get to understand things uh, on a second-by-second uh, -second basis. So uh, the, the main ideas are generated from the top and sent down, but the way it trickles down to the different operational levels would be different and would be uh, how well the operational managers and are able to understand what the ideas of the top level management are. So uh, it, it flows from uh, up to, it flows downwards. It, it, most, of, most of the time it flows downwards. There are certain institutions where it is employee driven and driven from the operational level where it might go upwards. But in most cases, I would have to say it is from uh, top to bottom. It would be driven from the uh, top to the bottom. And that's why, uh, you know, uh, the leader has a very important uh, part to play here. So if you are the leader in your, in your organization, if you are somebody who holds a position that can impact, I think you have a strong role to play in impacting the culture and changing the culture. And it will not happen very quickly. It will happen over a period of time and sustained efforts. So I think that will be uh, critical for you to do. And it's not an easy job, Enosh. I have to say that you really have to, uh, yes, I, I understand. You, you say that you have some. Uh, challenges with your department of culture, yeah. So you might have to change that within the parameters of your greater organizational culture. So I see what's happening right now, Enosh, is at this moment of time you're having a challenge within your department uh, culture. So there is, it's a subculture within the greater organization culture. Now you have to see how you can use your organizational culture to uh, bring about change in, in, in your in your department. Now this, that could be because of what has been there as a culture in your department or it could be because of certain employees. Now you have to find out whether it is uh, it is a whether it's a it's a culture problem or is a it's a person problem. Now if it is a person problem I think you should try and isolate uh, uh, you know the, 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 the whole issue or if it's a culture if it is an if it's a person problem, you should prevent it from becoming a constant problem. Yes, uh, I have Anurag Gupta asking me the question, can I know who's behind the scene? I think you're asking who I am. You're asking me to identify myself. I'm Swapnish Sebastian. 
uh, uh, being MBA from UK, been a faculty for uh, for about five years now, working with a lot of corporate companies as a consultant as well as as a trainer. So uh, I will uh, be sharing, taking you through this uh, module. If that's uh, okay with you, Anurag. Uh, Now, how can I how can I uh, see a culture? What are the things that will uh, help me see how a culture is manifested in an, in an environment within an organization? Like how you have culture within a country or society where you think have things like uh, you have belief systems, or you have uh, value systems, you have ways of celebration, you have ways of portraying information, you wait, you have. Uh, you know stories which are believed within that culture. You also have uh, certain, uh, you know, famous or you know uh, sacred places within a culture. So these are same things that exist within an organization. For example, rites and ceremonies. How do you, you know, perform uh, a certain way? How do you express yourself in a particular uh, function? How how was a you know a, you know a function conducted in a thing? How was how was a get together organized? How is it that people are made to feel uh, as one? And uh, these are the kind of things that uh, you are looking at. You know, you're also looking at the kind of beliefs that people have. Uh, do I have a question again from Enosh? Do I need to design a culture keeping organization policies and uh, procedures in line? Uh, I think you should, Enosh. I think it has to be in line with the organization policies as well as the greater organization culture, that would make it a lot easier because you will have the support of your top level management. Now, if you're trying to create a culture within your uh, you know, department which is not in line with your greater organizational culture, I think you might have some issues with the management, if not now uh, at a later stage. But I think if you could just keep it. Uh, Enosh, yes, uh, I will try to share some during the session. Uh, I think I'll, uh, as we proceed, let me try and uh, you know, complete some of the aspects here, and I will get back to you uh, on this image. So I have a ritual, I have myth, I have sagas, I have legends, you know, stories that people believe and stories that have been passed on from you know, generation to generation regarding uh, certain things. And I think Tata is one of the institutions which can be a perfect example for for studying organization culture and the kind of uh, employee loyalty that is being generated and how the great stories of Tata have, have been passed. And when you walk around some of the campuses of Tata, you see the great leaders, you know, the, the great uh, people within, uh, you know, your uh, the, the, the management, for example, JRD Tata and some of the others. You also see in some of the IT companies, you see stories about the, the founders and how things are celebrated. Um, Yes, Enosh, I would, I would try to give you some information on Tata uh, during the course of this uh, full module. I can't share a lot of information within this, but I definitely can uh, suggest that you go into the, 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 you know, the information database on Tata and the website as well, which will give you some idea or understanding of how Tata is able to do a great job uh, in, in its uh, thing, and, and I'm sure it has a lot to do with Indian history as well. If you look at Tata and if you look at Indian history, there's a lot of connection between the two. And you see that the growth of Tata has uh, has a synonymous relationship with the growth of the Indian economy as well. And you see the Tata being involved in different aspects, understands the culture, uh, you know. Yes. Open CCMTC is just a case study. Yes, I have something that has been shared here. Uh, I will try to share something, you know, uh, uh, although I don't have anything at the moment, I will try to, uh, you know, give you something at the end of the session or probably within a week so that you can have access to it. Uh, there's Anurag Gupta who's shared something on openccm.tcs.ignite, which can be, yes, uh, thanks, Enosh, thanks, Enosh, I've got your email. So, uh, so this is what I was talking about, you know, the ritual, story, symbols, and language, and all that, which exists within, you know, uh, an organization, which is strongly shown as as a culture. You also have, you know, values, the, the things that, you know, drive you to take, take uh, certain decisions and the way you behave, certain things that you believe in your heart, which is an impact of who you are and also your upbringing, and also uh, inspirational uh, 
stories. I mean, if you go to some of the institutions, you can see certain inspiration. For example, if you look at uh, 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 Kevin Kerr, uh, you will see inspirational stories of the father of uh, Jenny Krishna, who was the founder uh, in, in the organization, which talks about how uh, the company started off producing the shampoo in a sachet. And you go around to companies, an IT company like Cognizant, and you will see people like uh, Francisco de Sosa, who's the current CEO, uh, who's, whose story, who's a young CEO story being portrayed there. If you go to Tata, you will see people like Jayadi Tata. If you go to, uh, uh, you know, Reliance, I'm sure you will see people's stories like uh, 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 the stories of Dhirubhai Ambani and how he started off in, in a very humble place and so on. So uh, that would be uh, very good for us to you know, inspire a positive culture. Now, let me look at the types of cultures quickly. Uh, you have a bureaucratic culture, you have a clan culture, you have an entrepreneurial culture, you have a market culture. Now, just in brief, if I was to say, a bureaucratic culture. I have a, I have a question from uh, Vinod Kumar. Uh, the question is, how would I mold a resource to adapt my corporate culture? Enforcing a common culture across various geographical culture is possible. Uh, now, Vinod, I have a question within your question. I mean, when you talk about geographical culture, are you talking about within uh, the country? Are you talking about a global, uh, you know, workplace where you have a virtual? I'm not sure what kind of environment you have. Uh, I would, I would say that you have to have a conscious way of promoting your culture through meetings and through events and also through. Uh, the, the different levels of management that you have. Uh, enforcing culture, forcing culture upon someone would be a bit challenging. And that's why people, when moving from one organization to another, find it difficult because they would have been used to a certain culture and uh, some amount of enforcement would be required in order, in order for them to get into a common mode of working. Uh, it, it, is it possible? It is possible. But uh, again, geographical culture could be, uh, you know, could be limited to a country and when it's global I think it might be difficult and that's one of the challenges you know, Kumar, I think it's a very very good point uh, one of the reasons why uh, we have uh, you know a, a lot of things that give us uh, difficulties when working in a virtual team because you have different organization cultures existing within the same team because of different locations and different work environments even though they are a part of the same team so that becomes a of a difficult question today because of globalization and uh, uh, Enosh I would uh, I would definitely try to help you with some material which will help you I have quite a bit of material maybe I can scan it and send you some information uh, detailed case studies or I might try to get something that would be useful for you uh, yes I, I do understand you know I, I, I think I think it's very uh, important that we get that. Yes, I will I will try to provide some information. Yes. Anurag, uh, you have a question of what is uh, an entrepreneurial culture, right? Okay, an entrepreneurial culture uh, is nothing but a culture where risk is uh, greatly encouraged. That is, uh, people here are asked to take more risks so that they can be a part of the culture uh, of moving forward in terms of innovation, in terms of bringing in new business, in terms of bringing in, uh, you know, more volume of business in terms of bringing new products and so on. So an entrepreneurial culture is a culture where within the organization you're, you're bringing up entrepreneurs. So you're promoting entrepreneurship within your own organization. So this typically works with small time organizations. It also works with bigger organizations. But uh, it, it's important that you get this uh, you know, idea of risk taking and innovation within the environment so that people become entrepreneurs within their organization. So that brings in an entrepreneurial spirit, a culture of supporting entrepreneurship. Whereas uh, I know organizations where uh, people uh, would say, you know, at the end of the day, the company just tells me to do X, Y, Z. I just do my X, Y, Z and go back because when I come up with a good idea or a way of generating more income, it just it is just sh uh, shot down by the management. So we just do. So that's not an entrepreneurial culture, but an entrepreneurial culture is where people are encouraged to follow and pursue ideas and they're even given support financially and uh, other resource wise to move forward. The bureaucratic culture is typically where you have uh, power centers within the organization and the people sitting in these power centers you know decide most things and, and most people would approach their bureaucratic power center to get 
permission to get things done or to get leave or to get anything done. So there's a there's a lot of respect. And like our bureaucratic system, there's a lot of respect given to the people in the power centers. The clan culture is more about how do we do things as a group. And this is typically found in places like uh, 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 places like South Korea and Japan, where it's more about the group output and not the individual output. Uh, so it makes it convenient for them uh, to work together as a group and the sense of cohesiveness, a sense of group uh, is very high and team unity is usually high. So that's clan culture. How do we behave as a group? And that's very important. And the market culture as well. Market culture is where the culture of the organization is really defined based on the kind of market it's involved in. For example, if it's a stock market environment, then the kind of culture here is about risk taking is about or mitigating risk is about pushing uh, and getting profits and profits being the core area and the culture itself is about generating money and so on. So market culture is about how the market is defining how an organization's culture is. So depending on the nature of the product, the nature of the uh, and, and, and uh, the kind of environment you have this kind of a uh, culture which changes according to the market. One other question from Anadag, how do I establish uh, culture during a startup? And that's a very good question. Uh, Anadag, I think again you have to ask certain questions within your own question to be able to answer that. The first one being that uh, what kind of organization do you want and what kind of environment are you operating? So these are two questions that you have to ask yourself Anadag. What kind of uh, organization you want and what kind of culture, uh, what kind of environment you're operating in. So that will help you understand first of all what kind of culture you want to do. If you want a smaller organization with more empowered individuals, I think you should go on for an entrepreneurial culture. If you're looking at a bigger factory kind of environment, uh, a bureaucratic culture could be more important because you want to keep control of the process and maintain the quality uh, and that could be something that's important. If you're more of a, uh, you know, uh, person who likes to work with people and, and keep people happy, I think clan culture would be something that's good. Again, if you're starting a factory in a local place, clan culture would play an important part because the tendency to, for people to work in a group would be very important. Uh, so these are factors I think Anurag, you need to keep in, uh, you know, while, while doing that. Uh, I have another question from uh, Salman who says, can entrepreneurial culture create threats in the sense that people may leave your organization? Oh Salman, you are perfectly your, right with that and that's that's one of the reasons why entrepreneurial culture is not really encouraged in some of the companies. The simple reason being that uh, when you kind of encourage entrepreneurship, uh, there is always this case of the entrepreneur outgrowing you and moving and starting an organization but that's that's the nature of business. I mean, irrespective of whether you do it or not, you're going to have that kind of a, a challenge where somebody uh, who's going to pick up the ideas and going to start something who's going to compete with you. Uh, it's a very good question. It's a very, very uh, difficult question to answer also because if you if you do not promote people entrepreneurship within your organization, how are you going to get new ideas and great uh, you know, products? But at the same time, if that's going to help uh, fund another person's learning, which is going to cost you, that's going to be uh, a, a very, very challenging uh, one. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, Mohan Babu, I think I would try and uh, answer that question, uh, you know, let's try to send you some information on entrepreneurial culture because I think that's, I'll also send you some links, I think, which would uh, give you a better reading on entrepreneurial culture. Uh, yes. What are the functions? I mean, what does it do? I mean, we discussed that. What does it do? It creates a sense of identity. It creates a sense of, you know, oneness among people uh, and very important part that you have here is uh, culture reinforces the values. The third point given here is culture reinforces the values. So by having culture what happens is you know you, you continuously try to promote the key ideas of management. You're promoting the vision of the organization. You're promoting the mission statement of the organization. You're trying to tell people this is how we are expected to kind of work on. This is the framework within which you need to make your decisions and so on. Uh, it, gives, it gives people a, a sense of uh, you know, oneness in terms of the framework of decision making. Not everybody may make the same, take the same decision. Not everybody may act the same way. But when you have a culture in place, you see that people make decisions within that kind of, uh, you know, kind of organization. So that's that's something that uh, will, will, have, will really help us there. Now, 
Now, I, I, uh, I have a very interesting statistic here, which I discussed uh, briefly in the beginning. Uh, this is uh, a statistic taken by uh, this is a statistic taken by uh, uh, American uh, Psychological Association conducted a sample of two, two ten. I hope all of you can see my uh, screen on the board. So you just give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a minute, just as I'm Yeah, sorry for the interruption. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, the statistic that you have on your screen. And uh, the question being asked here is, if you're looking at a new job today, what aspect would you consider as most important? I think it's a very important thing. You might even try answering that question. What, what's most important for you? Now, uh, the statistic here uh, shows us that 45% of the people uh, you know, gave preference to pay and benefits. And I'm sure for most of us who want to change jobs, that would be a very, very important uh, question for us to uh, be able to get that uh, would be very important. But uh, I would say that once the pay factor is taken away, once your couple of months of settling down is happened, uh, you would really think that there are two things that would play an important role here. You have the red, which indicates the company culture, and you have yellow, the flexible work options. Now, I would say that flexible work, work options is, has a strong connection to organization culture itself or the company culture, which means to say that if you have a kind of a, an environment where uh, you know, you have a supportive culture for flexible work options. You might have those two factors combined together. So I think it's very important that we, we get this uh, uh, kind of uh, understood here that organization culture after pay and benefits plays a most important role in, in choosing a new company. And if, like I said, there are two reasons why most people don't quit companies. Yes, the pay aspect, I've taken the pay aspect out. I talk about two things. One is the organizational culture and the other is quitting the manager. Now, uh, the manager could also play an important role in determining a culture. And that's what Ninosh, I think, is talking about here. Uh, he, he's talking about how he can you know, change the department to culture within. So the manager plays an important role now. Your attempt may be a make or break uh, in, in, this, in this situation as well. So, so uh, I have just give me a second, I'm just trying to just trying to yes. Uh,
Karthik and I have some questions from you. Uh, shall I? I'll take the questions once I finish with this couple of uh, slides here, so that it'll be uh, you know quite relevant to what you're doing. We have another graph here, which is about the great places to work, and this is a survey conducted by this this uh, organization to find out which are the best places to work, and they've taken some of the top companies here. Now, uh, if you look at the graph on the left side, uh, you have the revenue generated in millions. You have the revenue generated in millions, the left side, the vertical axis. The horizontal axis is about the years. You have 2002 to 2010. And on the right, you have the vertical axis, which talks about the percentage of positive responses from the people who are a part of this survey. Now, uh, what I'd like you to observe here is the fact that you have uh, uh, an increasing trend in terms of the revenue. So you start from 2002 at 10 million, and you have a, a great increase in 2004 at 27 million, and you have 80 million in 2005, and you have 133 million in 2010. Uh, so you see an increasing trend. But if you look at the blue line, which is the positive responses, you see that it increases from 54% in 2002 to 2006, 77% uh, in 2006, and to 83% in 2010. So what the survey is really showing us is that the positive culture or the positive responses about culture is in line with or is directly proportional to the kind of revenue that you have here. So I think one of you had asked the questions for uh, the idea of do, does organizational culture really contribute towards increase, increasing productivity? And I think this graph is perfectly uh, uh, good for us to explain that in this case, on this particular survey, and especially in the top companies, these, these are from some of the top uh, come the best places to work for like Google. I think Google is a company that is best known for the, yeah, you know, the kind of uh, uh, work culture that creates freedom and environment and uh, entrepreneurship and, and friendliness and, and, a, and a great uh, sense of freedom as well within the company. So I really believe that this graph answers some of the questions of does organizational culture really contribute to the productivity. I have to say from this graph that yes, in, in some of the top companies are the great places to work for the organizational culture has definitely contributed to the increase in, 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 the, in revenue. Right. Uh, yes, uh, the role of the founder, I think I spoke about this. Uh, you have an example here, and I'm sure you know, so there are other examples locally within India as well of uh, GRD Tata and creating an environment, and they play a strong role in determining culture. And um, it's also very important for them to continue to do that over a period of time, to, to associate themselves with the company, to be able to perpetuate the culture, and also to, to, to make people understand uh, and practice the, the culture religiously. Now, uh, there are, there are uh, you know, stages in which culture is developed. You have the pre-arrival stage, you have the encounter stage, and you have the metamorphosis stage, which is uh, before the actual starting of the company or before a person arrives at a company, there is a, a pre-arrival stage of the culture, which is, which is brand new, which is the culture is in there, or if it is a new company, the culture will be formed by the values of the founder. So it is about the pre-arrival stage. And then you have the stage where the person interacts with the culture, and then culture also changes a little bit, and the individual also changes, but it happens to be that the individual seems to change a lot more uh, 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 among these things. So I, I feel that uh, that's a very important um, uh, yeah, yeah, very important um, part uh, of the income. And finally you have after the period of settling down you see the culture will after changing quite a bit in the beginning it, it tends to form a slow movement stage where culture is kind of steady and it, it moves into one phase to another very slowly with the people in there. So you have the fear. So if you're somebody who wants to change a culture, you have to know that these three phases are going to happen. You have the initial phase where people do not know what the culture is, pre arrival stage. You have the encounter stage when the actual thing gets into motion. When you implement a culture or implement an idea and, and it's moving within the system, there is an encounter. And finally, once you reach a mature stage, you have some uh, Yeah. Perpetuating culture, how do you do that? Uh, the leader plays an important role. You can create events, you can uh, have meetings, town hall meetings, where uh, people from the different levels of the organization come together and understand and discuss stuff in a very positive way. You tend to promote uh, ideas on the walls of the organization. You tend to uh, get people to speak about it on a regular basis. You get 
people to understand what the organization is trying to convey through its culture and and and, uh, and also create some of the positive ways of interaction yes perpetuating culture again you have a very uncompromising leader here you have uh, steve jobs the picture of steve jobs and being steve jobs uh, was a very important part in designing some of the products for apple because steve jobs was steve jobs and he was a very uncompromising unflinching uh, a very uh, purpose driven man in fact it was said that he selected his own team personally and he and he had his core members working working uh, in a very in a very uh, you know uh, uh, close knit manner to get out some of the best results and for for him to come up with the ideas of uniqueness in his products for example the apple products are unique and they don't they are not very compatible with the others it was the team also was kind of exceptionally good but they were also not very compatible with the others so uh, that's very much a reflection of steve job and he promoted the culture of uniqueness and, and excellence within the organization and the culture of excellence uh, uh, today is is what's uh, apple's uh, usp i would say and the question today is is tim cook able to keep up to the level of uh, steve jobs it's it's very difficult to uh, to, to say that uh, because it's, it's a new leader, he comes in with new ideas, uh, and, and he cannot be a Steve Jobs part two. Rather, he has to be Tim Cook part one. And so the culture really depends on the leader and how the leader is able to project and take the organization forward. As I said, it's only when you try to change organizational culture that you have difficulty. And I think some of the members who asked about how can we change a culture, how do I create an entrepreneurial culture, how do I, uh, uh, you know, understand, how do I conduct a survey? I have. I have Inash who's talked about conducting a survey among employees to design a culture. It's a very difficult uh, task to, to t undertake because um, when you're talking about culture, are you talking about the culture within the system uh, of your department or are you talking about the culture within the organization? So it is, it is uh, again, Mr. Kartikeyan has measurement scales. Uh, I would talk about things like employee motivation levels. We'll talk about leadership, uh, and I think that's where we need to move into the area of organizational climate. Now, what is the difference between organizational uh, culture and organizational climate? Organizational culture is the underlying factor which uh, determines how people behave in organizations. Climate is the mood of the organization and how the current performance uh, and the culture interact to produce a certain feeling among the people. So I think what you need to find out uh, Enosh and some of the others were talking about measurements is to understand how much people believe uh, in, in, in their own promotion of leadership within the culture, promotion of entrepreneurship in the culture, promotion of support and resources within the culture and so on. So when you try to change the culture is when you find real challenges because that's when you understand the strength of the culture. And uh, when, when do we have some of the uh, problems of changing culture, a dramatic crisis, a sudden change? A sudden change. Uh, a sudden change would mean a sudden change in the market, which means a drastic change in culture, a change from uh, a more of a supportive environment to a more of a difficult environment. Uh, and you have uh, small organizations where culture is not really defined and not really mature, so it's, it's actually taking place. You also have a weak culture, which we discussed, and I think the mergers and acquisitions are a very good example of explaining uh, the power of culture. Now, when mergers and acquisitions happen, uh, they are done at the business level or strategic level where the top people get together and, and try to bring it forward. But I believe the challenge is about how do you get the people from one culture to work together with another culture. And that's why a lot of mergers and uh, acquisitions have become failures and also become very complex because the culture has not been taken into consideration. For example, if you take about two cultures, for example, Tata bought uh, Coro Steel recently and Tata had Tata Steel had a different culture and Corus had a different culture. Even though business wise it was great for them to come together and uh, Tata pumping in funds, there was a lot of challenges in terms of work culture. The same could be said about Tata and Jack, Tata Motors and Jaguar Land Rover, where you had the challenge of uh, you know the, 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 the problem of uh, you know Jaguar having a certain strong culture, very strong culture of being functional for so many years and you had Tata which had its own way of functioning and, and when they came together there were certain things that uh, you know Jaguar had 
definitely mention uh, regarding this. So uh, this is these are some of the things that you have here. And uh, with that, we, we come to uh, a conclusion of the PPT. We have covered uh, just a recap of what is culture, so what, the way things are done, and the impact of culture dimensions, and how it's practiced uh, in terms of rituals and ceremonies, in terms of stories and heroes. We talked about a weak culture and a strong culture. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, you know creating a sustaining culture. We talked about the importance of a leader in the culture. We talked about perpetuating a culture, how to promote culture within an organization. We talked about uh, you know how leaders can also inspire and, and, and bring about a great culture and the challenges of changing culture. Uh, so these are some of the things that I would, I would, I would uh, you know like to to share with you and try to you know try to bring upon the idea to, to expand on the idea of organizational culture and try to relate it to it. And I, I think I thank I thank you so much for being with me through this uh, explanation and. And let me see if there are any questions that I can answer, uh, you know, uh, some of the questions that I can answer to this. Um, uh, I have a question from uh, Enosh, and the question is, can all these four cultures move badly? Uh, I have to say that every organization has an element of all four types of culture, and they are moving in battle. But the question is, how much of it exists within an organization in terms of each one? So you may have a dominant culture. For example, you may have a dominant entrepreneurial culture, or you may have a dominant market culture, even though the others exist with the organization. So I really have to say, uh, all of them do exist. The level seems to obviously vary from organization to organization. Can I, Anurag, can I uh, relate spirit, spirituality, same as psychology, with the organizational behavior um, for knowing people behavior better and who I'm working with? Anurag, I think uh, you're correct in a sense that uh, you know organizational behavior could have a strong link or could have a parallel to the fact that uh, people's spiritual beliefs impact them. So it could be like a spiritual belief within an organization. I would say that. I would say that. Uh, so understanding some of the spiritual individual beliefs may help understand the spiritual belief of an organization as well. Uh, uh, I think that's a very interesting question and, uh, and it, it also tries to identify what is actually the group norm. For example, the culture of the organization may be XYZ, but the culture that's being promoted within the team or within the department like uh, some, like Enosh would be probably be different from the, the original organization culture. So I could say that uh, spirituality uh, in a sense does play an important role and if you look at some of the organizations uh, the, the, the belief systems of the people can have a very strong impact on the kind of organization. For example, uh, uh, organizations built on a certain religion or a belief system or a certain religion could have a certain kind of a spiritual belief, which could also be translated into something that you have in, a, in, in the work culture as well. Uh, I'm just trying to scroll through and see if there are any more questions that are here. Uh, Enosh, I would uh, also suggest and for everybody here, uh, I'd like to thank Enosh for the questions he asked, but I think it's very important that we share it with everyone here. Uh, Enosh, one of the companies that uh, you would like to check out really to get more information about creating a culture, and I think it would be relevant to a lot of us, is to for you to check out a company called as Semco. I have actually typed it there and uh, uh, sent to all. So there's a company called Semco which I've typed there. Uh, it is a very good organization for uh, you to see how a CEO uh, can change the culture of an organization. And so it's probably one of the best examples in management circles. Uh, it's about a man called Rickard, some similar who is the CEO of the company, Semco, and uh, he, he goes to the U.S. and he's educated in the U.S. and during one of his business trips due to stress, he actually uh, falls ill. He has a heart attack and so he decides to come back and change the culture of the organization to reduce the stress. And I think uh, that would be that would be uh, you know a great a great case study for a lot of us to see how organization culture can be changed. And 
I'm not trying to say that what happens in that organization is what you should try and copy, but what I'm trying to say is it is possible to change culture and it's also possible to see where culture can be changed or modified uh, over a period of time in order to achieve enhanced productivity, a greater uh, workplace uh, unity as well as more satisfaction among the employees. Uh, I think we have run past the time and uh, I am just trying to see if there are any more questions uh, that I can have there. Okay, I have a question from Shruti Thakur. According to you, how appropriate is it for a new recruit to actually not agree with the existing culture of the organization? Say the new recruit has a better improvisation. Now, uh, Shruti, I, I, I need to first again take you back to the four types of culture that we have. That is the entrepreneurial culture, the clan culture, the bureaucratic culture, and the market culture. Now, uh, trying to answer your question, I'll have to put it in the context of each culture to answer that. The first one I'd like to say, if it's a bureaucratic uh, culture, I'm sure uh, you would have a lot of pressure from above to, for the individual to, you know, succumb to the pressure and work uh, according to the local culture. So that's that's what you might have in a bureaucratic culture. In, a, in an entrepreneurial culture, maybe that idea would be encouraged and maybe it is discussed to see if it is really going to bring about some kind of a change. So if, if you have a dominant entrepreneurial culture, then that would be something that would be uh, supportive of the risk taking is encouraged in this culture. Now, if you have a market culture, it would be put under the filter of the market needs. So in case uh, you have some idea which is not in line with the culture, but it is in line with the market needs, you're going to have a case where uh, that, that the person may have a strong case to bring about a change there. And if you have a clan culture, again, this will be the, like bureaucratic culture, you might have a little bit of resistance here because here you will have some of the, uh, you know, you will have the problem of, uh, is it okay with the group? So is the clan okay? Is the, is, the, is the community of people working in the organization fine with the kind of ideas that you have? So, uh, uh, you know, depending on type of the environment, you might be considered as a genius or a rebel. So if you are in an entrepreneurial environment, you might, you might be, uh, you know, one of the people who's considered as you know a, a, a history maker, a changer, an innovator and so on. If you are in a bureaucratic culture, you might be told as a one who causes trouble or other than. So uh, Shruti, that's a very good question, but I think uh, I have tried to answer that based on the four types of culture there. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a very good, uh, that's a very good question and I think I'm just trying to See if there are any other questions I can quickly address before we, we end up we end the session. Mohan Babu, you've asked for some detailed notes on entrepreneurial culture. Yes, uh, I could try to do that for you. Uh, and. Um, uh, Enosh, I think you have asked me for some information on Tata Scouts. You have also asked me uh, for some information regarding uh, aspects to design a new culture or change an existing culture. Okay, there has also been a question about the four types of culture with examples uh, which, which Enosh has asked for. Let me try and send that across to you. I think you have shared your email. Uh, I have a question from Preeti Shah. Uh, do you think that organizational culture affects an employee's personal approach towards problems? Um, of course, uh, Preeti Shah, I have to say the answer has to be yes because the organizational culture, uh, you know, uh, it's it's about how you fit into a system, right? You have to make the choice, and when you choose to work for a company for a brand name, uh, you are also accepting the fact that you are going to work within the framework of that organization's work culture. So I think it's key to understand that it, it does it does really uh, have an impact uh, uh, you know, at a personal level.
I think I've answered the question about does culture and productivity. Yes, the type of culture will definitely have an impact. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? I, I don't see any other questions which uh, I've not answered here. If there are any questions, if you could quickly type it out for me, I will uh, try to answer them. And uh, uh, Savan, I think I, I, I briefly answered the question. The question is, you want to create threats in the sense that people may leave your organization too quickly. And yeah, I, I think there needs to be some amount of control there. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, question because of, if, if you're going to create an entrepreneurial culture, you might actually be a building ground for entrepreneurs who will come back to stab you in the end. So I think uh, you know that's that's a very difficult proposition. Uh, I have a question from Vinod. A very very nice question. Balancing male and female employee uh, ratio impacts organization. But does does the balancing of men? Yes, I, I have to say that because. Uh, it, there is a saying that says there's a book which says uh, men are from Mars and women are from Venus so there is a great difference in the types of uh, thinking uh, and the way uh, men and women take decisions and, and interact with people and their core competencies and their abilities and their weaknesses they all differ so uh, you know a significant uh, uh, male or female uh, strength could definitely have an impact on the organizational culture. I think one of the companies I work with has significant uh, female employee strength. And if you look at the culture, the culture is such that uh, the pay is not much, but uh, there is a convenient shift pattern, which, is, which creates uh, a friendly environment for women, especially married women with kids to come and work. So uh, I definitely believe that the ratio of male and female uh, will have some kind of impact on the culture. Yes, gender does have an impact. Uh, Anurag Gupta, you've asked a question. Uh, will you get recording on your uh, on your emails? I think you will get it on your Edibaker account. Yes, you will have it on your Edibaker account. So that's that's fine. So uh, I think that's that's about it. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming today. I think I will be closing with this. I'll try to answer most of the questions. And let me try and get some information through to some of the people who are there. Thank you so much for attending and. Uh, I hope it was a useful session. I, I thank you all for your questions and your contributions here. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, uh, cancel this... Uh, close this session today. Yes, Anurag Gupta, you will... Uh, you will get it on your... You will get it, you will get it on your uh, uh, account. If you go to the Edureka account, you will see that there is... A, there's a slot there for you to look at the uh, modules as well as the archives, which will have information uh, and videos once they're recorded, they will be posted there. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Good evening. And uh, thank you so much for being a part of the session. I hope that all of you will come and take part in the, the full organizational behavior module, which will really enrich your understanding, which I believe will enrich your understanding about how to how individuals work in organizations, how uh, how people behave as groups, and what are the important things that are key to changing culture, to understanding culture, to dealing with people, uh, and job stress, and, and so on. So I have another session scheduled for 22nd on job stress. I hope all of you will come and join there with me as well. So thank you so much for being with me today, and have a great day. Bye, take care, good night.